Given a simply linked list, how can you reverse it recursively? That's today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we'll go through Leucode Problem 206 Reverse Linked List. The solution that we're going through today is to reverse this linked list recursively. This is the problem description. Let's just recap it one more time. One, two, three, four, five now. And we we want to reverse it, the output to be five, four, three, two, one now. So how can we do this recursively? Let's take a look. We'll just use a shorter example, one, two, three, four now. How can we reverse this simply linked list recursively? The output needs to be four, three, two, one now. Let's just have a quick recap about the iterative solution. If you want to have a detailed version, just to check out my other video, which we published yesterday about the iterative solution. But for now, we'll just have a brief, quick recap. This is the iterative solution. This is the actual code. What we did is that we have two nodes. We initialized the two nodes. One is called previous. Previous used to be here. And we, then we have another node called cur. The current node will just start, will assign hat to the current node. And every time we go through this iteration, there's a while loop here. The, inside the while loop, there are four steps. So that each time we'll just keep changing the current node's next pointer to point to the previous node and then keep iterating. That's the way how we did it for the iterative solution. I hope you can still recall that. For the recursive solution, it's very similar. We write code to do this recursively for us. Let's take a look. First, we're going to use a recursive function, which is very common in a lot of recursive calls. So here's our recursive function. Reverse, then we'll take two parameters. One is hat, the other is now. What is the now? Now we'll call it a new hat. This is the new hat that eventually we're going to return. So the base case, we'll take a look at this here. This is um, this is not only the base case, but also the corner case. Say, for example, we're given only a now linked list, right? There's only one node, which is now. In that case, in the recursive function, we'll just uh, first, we'll check to remember in every recursive function, there must be an exit case, right? That's the base case. When, when does the recursive function needs to return, needs to exit out of this recursive call stack. That is the base function. So in this case, hat equals to now, in this case, hat when we are given a, 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 a now linked list, an empty linked list, or when we reached the very end of the last node of a non now linked list, that's the case when we need to return. That, that's the case when we need to return, which we'll is return new hat. So that's why if say this hat is now, and we'll take this now here, and then we'll also call reverse function. The new hat is also now. So we first check if hat equals to now. If that's the case, we'll just return new hat. In this case, new hat is also now. That's it. Then we're done. So with the base case done, with the corner case done, we'll talk about how we can do a regular case for a non-empty, a non-now linked list. How do you do this recursively? We'll just basically to put the iterative function using the recursive way to write it. That's it. So instead of using previous current, we'll use a new hat. We'll call it new hat. Still, we'll use exactly the same four steps to go through the recursive call. First, we have initialized a new hat. Remember the four steps in the iterative function. We have we create a temp variable called next. This is exactly the same. We have a temp variable called next. How do we get the next? Which one is the next? It is hat dot next. We don't need a current we don't need a cur node. We just use hat dot next, which is this one. This is the next. This is the next node. Then step two. First recursion call step two is we'll break this link. Again, why can we break this link? Are we worried about losing access to the rest of this linked list? No, because we have a temporary variable called next, which is the new hat of the second half of this linked list. Right? And at this moment, we can safely break this link. How do we break that? By assigning the hat dot next, the pointer of the hat next pointer towards new hat. That's how we did it. We assign new hat to hat dot next. This line does two things, or just one thing. It's just changing the hat next pointer towards new hat so that this one's next pointer is pointing to the new hat and then 
this link is just a cutoff, right? This is the second step. We'll continue to do this for every single recursive call. Step three is we'll change the new head to be head. This is exactly the same as the iterative function, how we went through that. Now this is the new head. And in the very end, a new head is going to be here on top of four and we'll just return new head. That, that's going to become four, three, two, one. So we'll keep moving new head. At this point, hat, both new head and head are pointing at the node with value one. Since we have moved a new hat here, now hat could be moved to next. This is the last line of the four steps. Hat could be moved to next. This is the current status of this linked list. It's broken apart into two parts. One is headed by the new hat. The other part is headed by the hat. Then at this point, instead of using a while loop, we're using the recursive call. This is the recursive function. Recursive meaning it's going to call itself, right? We finished this first recursion then we'll call this recursive function itself, which is reverse hat, new hat. This is the hat, this is the new hat. Well, so this is the function itself, so it's going to get into it itself. But this time the hat and new hat is different. Previously, hat is here, new hat is here, but now hat is here, new hat is here, right? So we'll keep calling this. Now we're entering the second recursion, we'll call step one of second recursion. Again, we'll initialize a new temp variable called next. This is the next. How do we get this next again? That is because hat.next, this is next. Now we'll cut this link off by assigning hat's next pointer pointing towards new hat. This is the second step. Continue. Now we'll move new hat to this hat's position. Okay. Then move hat to next position. So we'll keep doing this. This is the end of the second recursion. We'll keep calling this recursive function until when? Until hat equals to now. Okay, let's just go through. There are two more nodes. We'll go through that real quick so that we can have a better understanding of how this simple linked list with four nodes, how it goes through this recursive function. Now we'll start the third recursive call. Hat is not equal to now, so it's not going to enter here. We'll assign a temp variable next. It's going to be, this is going to be the new next. Now we break this link by assigning hat next pointer to new hat, and then we'll move new hat over here. Then hat is going to be next. So this is the end of the third recursive call, right? Third recursive call finish. Now hat is here. So hat is still not now, right? Hat is still not now. So it's not going to come over here. Instead, it's going to create a one more temp variable called next. We'll break this link apart by assigning has next pointer towards new hat. And then what we'll do is we'll move new hat to has position and then hat will become next. At this point, the fourth recursive call is finished. Remember, there are a total of four linked list nodes. At the end of the fourth recursion call, hat is standing at the very now pointer. That's the end. The next pointer of the tail of the original linked list, right? At this point, it's about to start the fifth recursive call. In this case, it's going to check here. Then it's going to enter here because hat is now at this point, right? At that moment, what are we going to do? We're just going to return new hat. That's it. This is the new hat. Take a look here. Four, three, two, one, now. This is the correct output that we are, that we wanted to return. That's it. Time complexity of this algorithm is still O n. Suppose the length of the linked list is n, there are n nodes, so the time complexity is O n. That's time complexity. Space complexity is going to be O n because we need extra space for the call stack, for the recursive call stack. At most, it could go up to n levels. So space complexity is O n as well. Now let's quickly put idea into the actual code using the recursive way. Let's, let's see, let me copy this list node. We'll just call it return reverse head and now then we'll implement the private uh, the helper function the recursive function i uh, call it reverse list node head list node new hat so first as i said we need a base con base condition or the break condition for every for every recursive function it needs to have a break condition what we'll check is if hat equals to now what we'll do is we'll return new hat directly, right? That's the base condition and also the calling case. Whenever we reach the very end, 
the next node of the tail node will just return the new head. That's it. And then we'll have the four steps, which is initialize a temp variable, we'll call it next, which is head.next. So since we have initialized a new variable to be the new head of the second part of the linked list, what we can do is that we can break the head.next current link by assigning it to the new head, right? And at this point, this this given original linked list is broken apart into two parts. One is headed by new head, the other is headed by the original head. And then we want to do is what we want to do is we'll move new head to become the head, and then head will become the next. So both of them will move towards the right. That's it. These are the four steps, very similar to what we did in the iterative function again. In the end, we'll just return reverse head and the new head. So we'll keep doing this. Remember, both head and new head, they move towards the right after this one recursive call stack. So we'll move both of them towards the right. So we'll just continue to call this recursive function reverse head slash uh, comma new head. So this is the recursive function itself. Now let's hit submit and see. All right, except 100%, uh, 90. Yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the recursive function. If this video helps you to understand how the recursive function to, recur to reverse a simply linked list works, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Just destroy the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap the little bell notification so that each time when I publish a new video, you're not going to miss out on anything. And we are right now going through a linked list series after this, we'll go through a tree series, and after that, we'll go through more advanced data structures to help everyone better prepare for their upcoming in the coding interview questions. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.